HDR or high dynamic range photography is a very polarizing subject amongst photographers because it gets frequently abused and uh, often produces what to purists are cartoonish type images. That being said, I think a lot of photographers have embraced the concept of exposure blending to some degree because the simple fact that there's no camera sensor currently that can uh, really record what the human eye can see in any particular scene. And so it's only through multiple exposures that we can get um, what we call the high dynamic range or the, the amount of information of light that our eye can see in a scene. So here's a quick tutorial of why I have been, begun recently to use Photoshop's um, HDR Pro, which I hadn't used a lot previously, but I've begun to use it recently for exposure blending because it can produce a very natural result. I'm starting here in Lightroom and have three exposures, a zero, plus three, and minus three EV respectively. And, uh, and so what I'm going to do is you'll right click and uh, select edit and then merge to HDR Pro and Photoshop. And so after you've clicked that, and I've already begun the merge so we can skip that stage, it'll bring you eventually to this scene. A couple of things I want you to note here. If it's not already selected, I want you to select 32-bit. Now, 32-bit um, is the, the largest amount of information available. It actually can't be displayed on the current generation of monitors, but there's now a, a very simple way to um, to bypass that that kind of and give you complete flexibility for actually editing one of these files after that. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Another thing you might want to do is if there are to click the remove ghost just in case there is any kind of movement or people that are that would give you an unnatural result. And then this is the biggest key. It is to complete toning in Adobe Camera Raw. And that's where the magic really happens. And so if we click that, um, it will begun, begin to uh, merge these together. And uh, now don't be off, off put at first what appears to be a very flat looking image. I'm sure it's not at all what you envision when you begin to blend these. But going to the ACR stage is what really makes a difference in running this program and to getting a nice even blending of your exposures and a, a file that has as much information as you need to edit moving on from that. And so it'll take a few moments to uh, blend these. I'm using raw files that are fairly big, but um, other than a, a few seconds in the blending mode, the, the process happens very quickly. And so then you're brought to the ACR dialog. Now, this looks very familiar to anyone that is accustomed to using raw files. But the biggest difference here is that what you're seeing on your, your screen now has a full, instead of just a few stops in either direction, actually has a full 10 stops in either direction of uh, light information available there. And so the biggest difference is that when, for example, I want to open up the shadows here, I'm not actually doing it in such a way that is going to um, produce noise, you know, where I'm artificially raising um, shadow information. And also when I lower highlights, um, it's again, it's not that there's going to be blowouts because what's happening here is it's actually drawing the information from the uh, bracketed photos. And so I have a tremendous amount of flexibility in uh, moving highlights and shadows to get a final result that is the, the actual balance of the, the blending. There's other things you can do here, um, all the typical steps you can do in the ACR, but for the sake of this tutorial, let's just focus on really the highlights and the shadows because that's where we're accomplishing our blending of our multiple exposures to get that full range. And so after I click OK, it creates that 32-bit file. But as you can see over here, it's not actually available to edit at this point, again, because the monitor can't display. Now here's where it always fell apart for me before, but I just recently learned this technique of when I go to adjust this, I'll switch to go to mode and select 16 bits per channel. And then it'll ask me if I want to merge. And I do. Click that. Now before, I looked at this dialog and it would go into more of an HDR toning, which is what I'm really trying to avoid in this process. I'm not looking for a local adaptation. I'm not looking to make a cartoonish type result. But if you'll click here, and by the way, doing this does allow you, if you if this looks great to you, then you can, you can stop right there and you can do different kind of tweaking and you have complete control during this process. But for me, what I'm looking for is just to go up and select exposure and gamma. And what that's going to do is give me a look that was just like what, or at least very similar to what I was just looking at as a 32-bit image. 
when I've clicked OK on that now, I have a standard layer and I can begin all of my typical editing. But now the file in front of me has that full information that I was looking at before. And so I have got lots of shadow information here that uh, is not pixelated. It's uh, it's not trying to blow, um, trying to raise something out of nothing. So I'm going to eliminate noise um, for the, the editing process. And likewise in the sky, I don't have blown out highlights here, but instead I've got a full range to work with. And really, this is what I saw. Um, perhaps just a little more color saturation that needs to be there um, because I have very flat raw images to work with. But here I have a, a very good representation of what the eye could see visually in terms of the amount of light in the scene. And that's why HDR Pro has become my go-to program for blending exposures because it's easy to do and it gives me a very natural looking file to which I can begin my editing process. So once you've done your editing, whatever you're going to do in Photoshop, you can then just go to File and Save or Control S. And then if you're going back to Lightroom like I am, you'll see the file is now here in Lightroom with that full range and whatever edits you've done. Um, and with those exposures blend together. And you can see how much more information is in this file as compared to the original file or the original exposure that was, and this was the more balanced exposure for the scene. You can see how much more information we have to work with in the file that has been combined together. So anyway, I hope that this helps and uh, that this will be a simple way for you to get a more natural looking blending of your exposures. Click like below if you haven't already and uh, take a look at www.dustinabbott.net for more great photography tips, lens reviews, and information. Have a great day.